Reverend Marla Mason. Welcome to Unity of Bellevue. This is the place where we know and we practice the spiritual truth that God is good and all is well. I'm so grateful to welcome you into that love energy, that love vibration, where we know that we are about waking up. Our souls are about waking up so that we can be agents of change in the world. We are here to love. We are here to love God and to love one another. We are here to grow in our spiritual understanding, and we are here to serve the greater good, to serve the common good. Here at Unity, we're building a spiritual community that has worldwide impact, and it starts right here with us. So welcome into that consciousness and into that community. I'm so grateful that you're able to join us today. Let's talk a little bit about who is in the background helping us out today. We've got a wonderful team today. Let's start with our uh, meditation facilitator was Lynn Zeller. Thank you, Lynn, for a beautiful meditation. I'm so grateful. I'm really grateful for our whole meditation team. These folks uh, really give a lot of love and attention to your Sunday meditation services. So come on, check it out at 10 a.m. if you haven't had a chance to do that yet. And thank you, Lynn, for a great service this morning. Lynn is joining Lori Coleman as our prayer chaplain this morning. After the service, Lynn and Lori will be available to you. Uh, you'll go into a private room and you will be able to move into some prayer practice with them. They are willing to stand in knowing the spiritual truth for you and, uh, and it's a powerful experience. So I invite you to do that. If you're planning on coming to the community meeting today, that is at noon. So it's after the prayer circle. So uh, service, prayer circle, when the service is complete and then we'll take a little break and at high noon, at this same link we, uh, link, we will have our community meeting regarding reopening our building, which I'm super excited to share some stuff with you. Also serving you today, Sharon Wolf is your board host. You'll be hearing a little bit more from Sharon here in a while. Monica McDowell Elvig is holding it all down. She is our producer and uh, you'll also be hearing from her with announcements a little bit later this morning. I also want to welcome Cindy Akana in as our guest artist today. You might remember that Cindy was here, oh, about six weeks ago, I think it was. And uh, she is just a gem. We had some audio issues last time she was here, and you could kind of hear around the edges just how amazing and beautiful her music was. And um, and I'm grateful to welcome her back today to really, um, you know, we've, we've worked out the, the bugs and she sounds fantastic this morning. Uh, Cindy lives um, down south, not very far from us. She is a musician. She is a teacher. She is a beautiful human being and we are grateful to welcome her into our community this morning. Cindy, what do you have for us this morning? Well, I want to welcome you also and thank you for having me. I'm just talking to make sure you can hear me as we begin. <laughs> so excellent. I'm going to invite you at this point to release and breathe. If you can catch on to the chorus, feel free to sing along at any time. So. Release, release, release and breathe. When it does not serve you well, release, release, release and breathe. When it does not serve you well, let go of the hatred that binds an open heart. It may not serve you well. Let go of the madness that rips people apart. It may not serve you well. Release, release, release and breathe. When it does not serve you well, release, release, release and breathe. When it does not serve you well, let go of the anguish that keeps you all alone. It may not serve you well. Let go of the smugness that turns our heart to stone. It may not serve does not serve you well. Release, release, release and breathe. When it does not serve you well, does not serve, does not serve, does not serve you well. And so we breathe that in. 
recognizing that there is something greater than we are breathing us. And as we breathe out, we release, we let go. We allow the divinity that is right where we are. We allow that divinity to breathe us now to provide its dependable, its full, its lively breath. And we allow ourselves to be lifted in our conscious awareness of this presence, that which is breathing us. We feel our minds expand. We feel our hearts open more and more fully with every breath. We allow ourselves to step boldly into the awareness that there is one thing happening and it is happening right here in this virtual room, right where we are. And we are willing and alive participants in what is going on here. And so I know that as we stand in this awareness, we are deeply blessed. As we stand with open hearts and minds, we are richly blessed by the music, by the message, by the power of spiritual community to open our hearts even further. And so I open this gathering with a grateful heart, calling it good and very, very good. And I allow it to unfold to the highest good of all. And so it is. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let's with a receptive heart, hear this affirmation, this week's affirmation, which is borrowed from the soul awakening practice that we are going to talk about a little bit later today. Open your heart, your mind, receive these words intentionally and with focus. I allow my soul to awaken, my heart to open, my light to shine, my love to flow, my wounds to dissolve, my peace to radiate. And so it is. And just feel that. Feel these words made true for you by the power of your intention, by the power of your spoken word. And please join me by speaking these words aloud wherever you are. Speak these words aloud and with conviction with me. I allow my soul to awaken my heart to open, my light to shine, my love to flow, my wounds to dissolve, my peace to radiate. And so it is. And by doing that, you might find yourself evolving to a new space. I got tired of blaming others. I got tired of feeling so small. Tired of playing the victim or playing nothing at all. And so I changed my point of view. And my world evolved. I couldn't see, couldn't see, and I could not believe, not believe that I would choose to live in such a lonely place. I didn't think, didn't think that I had any choice, any choice but to feel bad and sit with all my shame. But I got tired of blaming others. I got tired of feeling so small. Tired of playing the victim or playing nothing at all and so I changed my point of view and my world evolved what did it take did it take for me to turn away turn away and be through camping out with my misery I took the time took the time to look up the love that filled my cup that helped me think quite differently cause I got tired of blaming others I got tired of feeling so small tired of playing the victim or playing nothing at all and so I changed my point of view and my world evolved I let some painful moments haunt my Thank you. 
not the present day any reason to keep holding on. So hear me out, hear me out when I say you can change, you can change the whole way you perceive your circumstance. You get tired of feeling so small, tired of playing the victim or playing nothing at all. You can change your point of view, let your world evolve. You can change your point of view and let your world evolve. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> what a great song, you know? We have to choose to evolve. That's it in a nutshell. If we are um, willing and open to change, if we are willing to look deep inside of us and see what's there, acknowledge it, recognize it, and give ourselves the opportunity to also see it expanded, see what's already there, expanded and, 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 and growing and evolving. This is what life is about. You see, the nature of the universe is that it evolves. That's the nature of things. The nature of the universe, the nature of the infinite presence that we call God, it is the universal energy, right? And the universe is always evolving. God is always evolving. It's the nature of things. And if we get stuck and refuse to change, refuse to evolve, we are acting in opposition to the nature of things. And when we act in opposition to the nature of things, life doesn't work very well. That's kind of the bottom line. And, you know, and here's the thing, I, there's a line in that song uh, that I probably won't get quite right, but here's, here's the thing about it is, it's like, you know, we have to be willing to change or, uh, you know, not be a victim anymore or whatever, or we're, maybe we're not doing anything at all. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know, not doing anything at all is still in opposition to the universal presence that is all about activity and doing and, and, and being absolutely like there's a vibration, there's a vibratory frequency that the universe bees at, exists at, um, uh, uh, but it also does things like birth planets, <laughs> right? And suns and black holes, right? Out of that vibration comes divine right action. And this is so much of what we're talking about all month long. We're talking about this soul awakening process. How do we uh, become mm, birthers or midwives of the awakening of our own souls? And we're using as our guide this book, Soul Awakening Practice. I urge you to get your hands on a copy of this if you haven't already. It's by James O'Day. And there are many um, guest authors that um, we're going to hear from one of them this morning. Um, here in a little while, but there is a soul awakening prayer here that that I would like us to just take a moment to review. We did this last week. Uh, so I want to start by re-anchoring us in the soul awakening prayer, which is on page 13. And I invite you to just bring your attention to your breath. And to feel your breath moving in and out of your body and to... <laughs> Open your mind with an intention, with a willingness to change, with a willingness to be transformed. And in that consciousness of willingness, hear these words and let them anchor in your very beingness, in your very energy, in your very existence. Soul awakening, heart opening, light shining, love flowing, wounds dissolving, peace radiating. And breathe with me.
feel it and own it, to allow it to vibrate within your physical body. Feel your soul awakening, your heart opening, your light shining, your love flowing. Feel your wounds dissolving and peace radiating from every fiber of your being. And according to James O'Day, if we are able to do this, and this is what we talked about last week, if we are able to do this, to, to, to be in the presence of this soul awakening prayer, we take these ideas into contemplation, into the temple, into the sacred temple. Contemplation is temple, the sacred ground of our inner beingness. We contemplate these ideas. And from that place, we are moved to divine right action. We take right action in the world from a place of prayer. In this case, we're talking about the soul awakening prayer. We contemplate what is under the meaning, what this prayer is about. And then we move into right action, the freedom to be who we are, not afraid, but simply expressing and being ourselves. And so that is kind of last week's message in a nutshell. This week, I want to put some attention on the one part, on the part of the soul awakening prayer in which he says, wounds dissolving, wounds dissolving. Where are your wounds? We've all got them, right? Here's how you know if you have any wounds. Are you dissatisfied in any area of life? Are you angry about anything? Are you unforgiving about anything? Is there any part of your life that is not working 100% the way you want it to? If, this, if, if these things are true of you, you're wounded. Because our wounds, um, uh, 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 what happens is when we have an experience of woundedness, we adopt a consciousness around it. And then that consciousness, you remember, is what outpictures in the world. So here's how James O'Day says it on page 183 in this book. He says, um, uh, uh, what spirituality is about, he says, regardless of what path we follow or what techniques we use. So you could be you know, Catholic, you could be Lutheran, you could be New Thought, you could be um, Hindu, you could be anything. No matter what path we follow or what techniques we use spirituality is about removing these blockages these wounds as we remove them we are removing the potential for being wounded by past experiences after all the world cannot wound us we think the world can wound us we think often maybe not all of us but the fact is the world cannot wound us. The world is an experience that comes into us and we learn and grow from us. If it has wounded us, that's because we've resisted the experience and held it inside. If it's no longer going on outside, why is it still creating disturbance inside? The answer is because we did not let it go. Admittedly, he says, it can be difficult letting some pain painful experiences pass through, but we are always better off permitting the past to be an experience we had than letting it go. It will still become part of you. You don't lose anything by not resisting it. You actually become a greater being because of every experience you have. And so our wounds in this in this, um, in this context are opportunities for us to evolve, to learn and grow, to open more fully, to let them pass through us. If we don't allow them to pass through us, they show up in our individual experience of life. And then what happens is I kind of tend to herd with other people who have the same beliefs about life, right? And, and, and so our individual experience of life uh, begin, becomes our collective experience of life. Our individual wounds become the collective wounds. And I don't know about you, sometimes um, as a collective, I've done things that I would not have done individually. 
I've said things that I would not have said individually because everybody else was saying it or doing it. And I was attracted, there's, like, there's a magnetic attraction to people who have similar wounds. And I don't mean the same experiences, I mean the same beliefs coming out of those experiences. And remember, it's those beliefs that are, are out picturing in our lives. Our woundedness, James O'Day says, is the cause of all our problems. He says these blockages, this is page 184, he says these blockages are the cause of all of our problems, both personally and collectively. Because we are not comfortable within ourselves, put on your listening ears here for a second, folks. Because we are not comfortable within ourselves, we are driven to manipulate the world around us which leads to mistreatment of others and even wars. Because we are not comfortable within ourselves, we try and make things okay by manipulating things out there. And I have to tell you, one person can cause a lot of harm manipulating things out there. But then when we kind of herd together with our collective woundedness, we can create even more harm more pain. You see, pain begets pain, right? Pain always begets more pain. And I don't mean the pain that we choose to feel. I mean the pain that we push down. The pain that we push down always begets more pain. If we're willing to feel the pain, if we're willing to walk through the woundedness in a way that is conscious and alive, and, and willing to resolve and willing to release and willing to let go, if we're willing to do that, We, the world transforms, our individual lives transform and the collective life transforms. Now, I am sure that there are at least some people sitting in this virtual room who are thinking, well, you know what, my life works pretty well and I don't really have any problems. So I must have resolved all my woundedness. And you know what, hallelujah, congratulations. I'm really happy for you. That's terrific. Now, your next task, the collective wounds because we clearly have collective wounds, right? This country, <laughs> oh my gosh. And we talked about this last week. We talked about, you know, this country was founded on the idea of equity, right? Um, this idea was founded on the idea that all men, <laughs> if you will, were created equal. And we had to grow, we've evolved in the last 200 plus years to come to understand that that was the best our founders could do at the time was all men, right? But over the years we've grown and we've evolved and we've discovered, gosh, all men should maybe mean women too. All men should maybe mean people of color too. All men should maybe mean something broader than the mindset, the consciousness of the people who founded this country who did something radical and amazing. Uh, let's not discount what they did. It was radical and amazing for its time. And we've evolved as a country and we've come to understand that all men needs to include some different folks and some different language. Now, now, now the, the, the challenge is we have some collective wounds in our past when we did not believe and some people still do not believe that we are all created equal. And we have a collective wound, the ways that we have been driven to manipulate the outside world because we didn't want to feel our feelings. Genocide, we've enslaved people, we've killed people, we've created a class system that includes massive poverty and a few who are manipulating the system out of their woundedness, manipulating the outside world to have it become a certain way so that they don't have to feel their feelings. And we all do this. I'm saying they, but I mean us. We all do this. We deny, we deny, do you hear this? We deny the situations. You know, Holocaust denial is running rampant. It's crazy. There, we know that that happened. But if we don't wanna feel our own woundedness, we're going to deny that that happened or that, that, that there was any complicity in it. We deny the, the effects that 600 years of enslavement of a peoples 
600 years of enslavement of a people is going to impact that people. It's going to impact their consciousness. The pain that those people experienced through 600 years of enslavement. And the enslavement happened because we were willing to see some people as less than. And the only way we're willing to see some people as less than is if we believe we are less than out of our own woundedness. And then we project that onto others and make them less than and make us more than. But we have problems. We're not happy. When we project our wounds onto others, we create things like poverty and racism. And our denial, our denial, our unwillingness to actually face up to that um, uh, is a denial of our own woundedness. In order for us to um, face up to, to the impacts of 600 years of enslavement of a peoples, we, we have to deny our own woundedness, you know? <laughs> And, and, uh, and I would rather do that <laughs> than um, face up sometimes, sometimes. I would rather do that than face up to what 600 years of enslavement can do to a people's. You see, here's the thing. My way of being in the world uh, in ways that are not life affirming is born of my pain, is born of my wounds. And, and, and I've got some. And out of my wounds, I manipulate my immediate world, right? To the degree that I have the power to do that. As I resolve my wounds, I have less and less need to manipulate my immediate world. But when we come together collectively and live on our collective woundedness, we are, we are finding ourselves manipulating the world collectively in ways that have some people one down, some animals one down, other creatures one down. Are we willing to allow this pain to push us to a place where we are willing to say, yes, okay, I am ready to step up and face what is. Because this is what's going to awaken your soul. This is, this is, is, you know, this is not social justice work. This is spiritual work. This is spiritual. Your soul is crying out for healing. Your soul, our collective soul is crying out for healing. This is spiritual work. Its outcome in the world is social justice. Yes. But where the work is done is at a spiritual level, in consciousness, at a mind level, in a consciousness level, at a spiritual level, we there, there, there is such a powerful call for healing. And we have to stand up and say, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, we've ha I've had pain. We've had collective pain. And out of that collective pain, sometimes we've behaved inappropriately. Let me see if I can make up for that a little bit right now. Let me see if I can serve the common good in a way that makes up for that a little bit. Maybe I can face the institutional racism that we've created in this country from a place of understanding that we did that not like anybody was wrong. They were just wounded. That's all we don't we this is not about making some people wrong or bad. It's about understanding that we all have our wounds and we behave out of that place. And as we evolve and as we wake up, we begin to fi fig re figure out that all men are created equal actually means all men and women are created equal. It actually means that all men and women are created equal no matter what color their skin is. We begin to figure out and 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 we learn and evolve and grow. That's what we do. That's what we're here for. We are here to duplicate the nature of God, of spirit, and God is evolving and growing. That's all God does. And so what's called for here is an acceptance of the woundedness and allowing the wounds to dissolve. What's called for here is an opening to the pain that would create such systems of, of enslavement and poverty and racism. And, uh, you know, what, what kind of pain could create that? A deep, profound pain is the kind of pain that could create a genocide in, in the Holocaust. How many millions? Six million died-ish. What? Six million lives. What? The immensity of the pain in Cambodia. Three million people died in the Cambodian genocide. 
third, some are close to 30% of the population. And you know what? I was there and I visited the memorial and there is a tomb filled with skulls. I don't know how many thousands of skulls of people who died. There is a place where they buried the children who died and people have come for years and tied little children's toys to the place where the dead children are buried. What kind of pain could kill one third of the population? One third of the population of a country. What kind of pain could create an Armenia or a Rwanda or the situation that's unfolding with the, 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 the schools for indigenous people and we're discovering literally hundreds of children's bodies buried, buried. And nobody knows what happened to them. And nobody is taking responsibility. What kind of pain could number one, remove people from their, remove children from their homes, send them to residential schools to, 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 to get them to betray their own culture, their own beingness. And then when they died, not be accountable, but just hide them somewhere. That's pain that created that. And so what's called for here is not blame, is not shame, is not guilt, but a healing. Wounds dissolving so that we don't have to behave this way anymore, so that we don't have to act out in the world anymore from a sense of neediness or a sense of, 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 of you know, well, uh, uh, I'm going to have to manipulate the world in order to get my needs fulfilled. And let me talk again to those of you who are thinking, well, you know what, my life is fine. That's a privilege. To be able to think, you know, um, I have to tell you, this, this is one of the things I like to do. So this is loving recognition here. Uh, well, you know, my life is pretty good. <laughs> you know, I got a nice home. I got a good job. Things are going pretty well. I've done most, you know, I'm doing my spiritual work all the time. And I go to classes and I do this and I do that. And, you know, I don't have a lot of problems. And I don't have to read the news about what's going on in the Middle East. And I don't have to read the news about children being buried out back behind schools. I don't have to do that. But that is a privilege that I don't have to do that. If I'm living in the Middle East right now, I am the news. I'm watching the news. If I'm one of those children buried out behind a school, I was the news. And so you're right, you know, I'm right. My life is pretty good. And I don't have to go there. I don't have to engage in this conversation about the woundedness of the world and how, how, uh, how could this ever outpicture. But that's a privilege. And as a woman of relative privilege, it's a relative privilege, right? As a woman of relative privilege, what is my, I mean, we say we are here to serve the greater good. What is my spiritual calling to serve the greater good? By dissolving my own wounds, by coming together with people who are doing the same work of dissolving their own wounds, by facing up, by stopping denying what happened, feeling the pain of it so that we can move on. And we won't be able to move on from this stuff, people, until we're ready to feel the pain. That's just the way it works. This stuff that is born of pain, remember what he said in here? Uh, he says, these, blo these blockages are the cause of all our problems, our world problems. Because we're not comfortable within ourselves, we're driven to manipulate the world, which leads to mistreatment of others and even wars. He says, spirituality is about moving these blockages, removing the potential for being wounded. You see, we have to uh, uh, dissolve these old wounds by being present to the pain, allowing ourselves to feel that pain collectively, collectively. And when that happens, then we will be able to move on. And let me just say something. In our New Thought teaching, we know something very, very powerful. We talk about it as a cry for healing, but the spiritual truth is there is nothing to be healed. There is only a greater truth to be revealed. I'm going to say that again. There is nothing to heal there is a greater spiritual truth to be revealed. 
And to me, that resonates so much with wounds dissolving. They just dissolve as we rest with them, as we rest with the pain. The idea that there's nothing to be healed means I can sit with the pain and wait for the revelation of the greater truth. And the greater truth is always going to be love because God is love. The greater truth is always going to be love. So I sit with the pain of my broken marriage or my broken relationship or my loss or my whatever it is in my individual life. I sit with the pain of that until a greater truth is revealed and it's always going to be love. And collectively, we sit with the pain, we talk through it. What was it like to be an enslaved people for 600 years? How do you think that has trickled down over the last 200 years, a hundred and some years? It's not even 200 years, hundred and some years, you guys. What, you know, um, uh, uh, what is it like to be poor in our culture? Wow, that must be really painful. Let me see if I can sit with that pain. What is it like to be disenfranchised? Let me sit with that, that pain. And we wait. <laughs> contemplating, contemplating this prayer, soul awakening, heart opening, light shining, love flowing, wounds dissolving, peace radiating. We sit with this pain and we do it collectively with others and we use our words to talk it through and we do the justice and reconciliation work until the wounds are dissolved and a greater truth of love is revealed. So how do we reveal that truth? How do we, well, you know what? We got the recipe last week, right? We reveal that truth by prayer. And this, if you don't have like, you know, 10 minutes to do this soul awakening practice mm, four times a day, do it breakfast, lunch, dinner, and bedtime. Just take a minute to read it, to sit with it, to feel it, to open your heart to the evolutionary possibility and potential of your life. As your soul awakens, as love flows, as peace radiates, as love dissolves, as, as wounds dissolve. If you can sit for, for five minutes a day with this prayer and with the idea that something greater is waiting to make itself known as you stand in willingness to be present to the truth, because the truth always heals. Be present to the facts of the situation. And so to reveal truth, we pray. We pray. We might pray the soul awakening prayer. We might pray a, 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 a spiritual mind treatment of peace and love and joy for the world. We might pray a prayer of awakening, of ability to be with the pain. We might, there's all kinds of different ways that we could pray about this, but we pray every day. We contemplate. This is the recipe from last week, right? We contemplate. What do each one of these things mean? And there is such help in this book for contemplating. Um, what does this soul awakening prayer mean? What is this about? I've been reading from some of the help for that uh, this morning. So we pray. We contemplate, and when we contemplate, we study, we learn, we get present to what really happened. We open our hearts to the truth and reconciliation work. We cry. We feel the pain of others as well as our own pain. We, we, we enliven our compassion so that we can be present to the pain of others. And we wait for the truth to make itself known, and we tell the truth. We tell the truth. Because if we are denying that these things happened, we are attempting to avoid conflict or we att are attempting to not feel the pain. I, I'm a bit of a conflict avoider. Anybody else? Like, oh, I just won't say that because something might happen. Somebody, oh, no, I won't say that. Oh, no, don't say that either. But that's not authentically me. Right? And certainly, you know, we all, and we've talked about this in, in, in other lessons. I mean, certainly we want to be loving, we want to be kind, you know, we don't want to like, you know, be accusatory or trigger something, but we also can speak the truth lovingly and clearly, especially when we see injustice happening. Oh, I see injustice happening in front of me right now. Did you see that? Here's what happened. That is unjust and I see it and I know it. 
And I am willing to say that. And it might bring up conflict and it might bring up pain. Oh, well, that's the healing process. That's the revelation of truth process. And I, and I have to tell you, we are at a place in our planet right now where the world is asking so much of us. We are in a place in our country, in our neighborhoods. Oh my gosh, don't go to nextdoor.com. <laughs> Uh, you know, there's so much woundedness just on display. The world is asking so much more of us than our smallness, our denial, our avoidance. If we continue with our smallness, our denial, and our avoidance, the pain is only going to get worse. This is our opportunity to step up with courage, to step up in love, to step up in a consciousness of inclusion to step up in a consciousness and awareness that the truth always heals and that and that and that the infinite vibration that we call god is right with us supporting and nurturing us while we do this critical and important work to make this world that works for everyone to make a world in which genocide is simply unthinkable in which school shootings just plain don't happen because we're not so wounded that we would shoot little children in their classrooms. And, and I know it wasn't you, but our collective woundedness created an environment in which that person does not get what they need. The world is asking so much more of us right now. Will you step up? Will you step up? This is your opportunity to make a difference, to be the kind of person who creates more truth, more wholeness. And in order to get there, you got to be willing to sit with your pain and we have to be willing to sit with our collective pain. And so what I'd like to do is close with this soul awakening prayer. And I invite you to simply bring to mind a, a wound that you have, a painful experience, something that you have been hesitant to be present to, and that might be something within your own life. It may be a larger woundedness, a collective woundedness something that you have been denying or you have been unwilling to be present to or just a little bit hesitant about being present to. Just bring that to your attention now and follow your breath. Recognizing that your breath is the breath of the very God of our being. Our breath is that which enlivens us. It is the beingness of spirit, the respiration, the inspiration that gives life to all things. And as you breathe, you relax and you settle in and you bring to mind this woundedness, this place of woundedness in your life, whether it's individual or collective, where do you see woundedness that causes you pain? And I invite you to feel that pain. To simply allow it to begin to surface. For you know that you are supported and sustained by the very beingness of God. The pain does not rule you. It teaches you. And as you open your heart and your mind fully to this experience, hear these words of the soul awakening prayer and allow your soul to awaken a little more fully than it ever has before. Soul awakening.
heart opening. Light shining. Love flowing. Wounds dissolving. Peace radiating. Know that in the felt experience of this pain, there is a revelation of greater truth. You know and remember who you are and what you belong to, that you are the very embodiment of love. And you love yourself and you love others. And you allow this spiritual truth like a healing balm to move through your body, to move through your family, your community, the planet itself. You know the truth and the truth sets you free. And so I give thanks for the truth. I give thanks for the wounds that have taught us so boldly and powerfully to be loving human beings, loving embodiments of the infinite. I give thanks for the willing hearts, each person in this virtual room willing to grow and to change. And I give thanks for the vision, a world that works for everyone, a world of peace, joy, justice, everlasting love. And so I close this message with a grateful heart and I call it good. And so it is. Amen. hit the road and he left me standing in a house to be shoes that didn't fit and with a heart overwhelmed a tragic story like Shakespeare might cast but it doesn't say who I am what I'm worth, I'm not my past. I shrugged off the jury and forgive myself. Cause I know I did the best I could. I put that blame back on the shelf and called it good. Best you could I put that 
blame back on the shelf and call it good. Cause like a river, we can move ahead if we jump from our shipwrecks. Broken bones and battered hearts, they never have to dictate what comes next. Tragic story like Shakespeare might cast. It doesn't say who you were, or what you were, you're not your past. Shrug off the jury and forgive your sin. back on the shelf and call it good, call it good, yes, call it good. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sharon Wolf, and on behalf of the Unity of Bellevue Board of Trustees, thank you so much for joining us today as we have been lifted by a power for spiritual meditation, message, and music. If you are new to our community, we welcome you and invite you to visit our website to explore all that we have to offer you. And please reach out to us so that we can learn how to best serve you. As we enter this time of giving of our financial support, if you are so led, please feel free to give, but don't feel obligated, of course. On your screen, you're seeing a variety of ways in which you may bless us with your gifts. For those of us who call the Unity of Bellevue our spiritual home, we give as a part of our spiritual practice, affirming our own abundance. We understand that we are channels through which the good that God is flows abundantly. Our financial support represents our commitment to awakening people to their spiritual nature, to enable us to create and continue on such a vibrant, thriving spiritual community. So in this consciousness, I invite you to join me as we declare our offering affirmation together. I give freely and for the joy of giving. I know that seeds sown in love produce an overflowing harvest of good for me, for this center, and for all people. Lovingly, I give. Joyfully, I receive. And so it is. And so I just declare a blessing on these gifts. I know that they do a great and mighty good here in this community and in the world through the gift of our own tithe. God is good, supplies so abundantly, so richly, and so freely. I am so grateful. And so it is. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Monica McDowell Elvig. I am your center administrator and I'm very glad to be with you this morning. If you are joining us for the first time, we welcome you with open hearts. We open you into spiritual practice. We are big on spiritual practice and we invite you to join in community with that because it's in community where that spiritual practice makes the most uh, transformation happening happen for individuals and for communities and for the world. To, uh, we are online for just a few more weeks to stay uh, up to date on everything that is happening online. The best way to do that is to go to our website, unityofbellevue.org, and sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. There's a sign-up form on the bottom of every page. We look forward to hearing from you. Please reach out. Our prayer chaplains today are Lynn Zeller and Lori Coleman. They will be uh, staying on after celebration service. We'll take a three minute break and they will be uh, hosting a virtual prayer circle. It will be via a breakout room. So you'll be asked to join that breakout room uh, when it's time. Uh, they would love to pray with you. 
If you are not able to make it, you can also send prayer requests to them at prayerchaplains at unityofbellevue.org. We are also having a community meeting at noon today. Reverend Marla will just mention uh, more about that. You've gotten an email about that probably from our newsletter. Uh, so uh, even if you don't stay for the uh, prayer circle, you're welcome to log back on to the same link at noon for that community meeting about reopening. And just a reminder that Sabrina is on maternity leave now. We, um, we just continue to send her blessings and prayers. Living What Matter meets at one this week. Uh, if you uh, uh, would like to drop in for that group, that's a week, uh, weekly spiritual practice that Reverend Marlon does with the Book of Soul by Mark Nepo. It's a great uh, free community midweek check-in. So Zoom link and all of that is in the chat. And uh, I'll see you next week. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you, Monica. So grateful for you and for all of the amazing people of our community and all the great things we have going on around here. Just another little reminder, stick around for Prayer Circle. If you want to join the uh, community meeting that starts at noon, you can just stay logged on if you wish and join the Prayer Circle in the breakout room. Or you can just stay logged on and not join the prayer circle, though we hope you do because prayer is what it's all about. Um, or if you wish, you can log out and log back in later. Just use the same link that you uh, logged in with for the Sunday service this morning. Um, you can log back in at noon for that meeting. So I am grateful for you all. Uh, come and check out what's going on. Go get some prayer support and I will see you at noon. Bye, everybody. Have a great week. The joy of a songbird now my whiny voice shift happens. Zoom, somebody move. Shift happens. Zoom, somebody move. There are times you bicker with the friends of us or spouse. When it's too much, giving in feels like the only out. And I don't know what you've been told, but Simply giving up control, shift happens. So somebody move. Shift happens. So somebody move. Shift, shift, shift to a table with a view. Shift, shift, shift into someone else's shoes. Shift, shift, shift to the kitchen from the to a plow, shift, shift, shift from a gavel to a plow. Shift happens. So somebody move. Shift happens. Yes, so somebody move. Shift, shift, shift to a table with the view. Shift, shift, shift into someone else's shoes. Shift, shift, shift to the kitchen from the loud. Shift, shift, shift from a gavel to a loud. Shift, shift, shift from a gavel to a plow. Shift happens. Thank you.
Everything.